What's going on, y'all? So Ooh, hold on. Let me get myself together because, baby, listen, I'm feeling a type of way. Um, <clears throat> I said I was hurting just a little bit because I bumped one of my uh incisions, bitch. Girl, that's the most pain I felt this whole time. This whole fucking time. I said, bitch, what? Okay, we not finna do that. We've been good all this time. I said, bitch, be careful. I was like, okay, my bad. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Okay? But y'all know I had to come back on here. I could not. It, bitch, I would have been I would have been like this. Listen, love at the lockup. Um, I just really want to tell y'all, like, this was a crazy episode. No energy or nothing. I don't care. Ashley would have been on here just to tell y'all, like, to get on here. Because y'all know love at the lockup is my shit. Okay? And, baby, this episode, this episode... <laughs> A mess, all right? A mess, okay? But this is Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, Season 3, Episode 33, I believe. Um, Dirty Little Secrets, okay? Because you're my little secret. See, bitch, I'm so mad. I ain't got my voice back, okay? Shit. <clears throat> Fuck. Okay? And if y'all see me leaning over, it's because I need to adjust my side or whatever, so don't worry about it. I'm okay. But um, anyway, so we get up into the episode, baby. First of all, they gave us seven couples, okay? They gave us seven couples. We get Andrea and Lamar, you know what I'm saying? First of all, it's Andrea's little birthday. You know, her friends coming in from um, Mormonville, Utah. You know what I'm saying? And um, Andrea got this hot pink number on, okay? Now, you know, if it wasn't for the Mormons or whatever, and she going out on the town, like, there's two different sets of Mormons, I'm, I'm, I'm figuring, okay? Because after looking at... The Real Housewives of uh, Salt Lake City and seeing how they dress and, you know, they're into the Mormonism and stuff like that. They dress cute. They dress nice. They dress fashionable and stuff like that. And then we see Andrea and her friends, you know, Andrea's friends a little frumpy and shit like that. I'm like, oh, what the hell? Okay. You know, but Andrea, she got this pink little printed um, number on or whatever. It's tight fitting. She got her little black boa or whatever. You know, um, she was like, listen, first of all, I'm finna go kick, pick up my friends or whatever. But them hoes is not coming into my house, okay? They are not coming in into my house. I, you know, I just worry about the fact that they might be judging me or whatever. If I start sweating, it's hot up in here, okay? I got the door closed. The heat is up. Girl, it's just hot. Deal with it, okay? But, um, you know what I'm saying? You know, and she was like, they judgy. They real judgy. And I don't want them to judge me because, you know, you know, I'm not living up. I guess I might not be living up to their standard of the Mormon lifestyle, you know, because you're supposed to be a mother at home, you know, basically not working and all this stuff. I said, what? You can't work as a woman? You know what I'm saying? That's not how it be on sister wives. Them women work. At least Janelle works. You know what I'm saying? Mary got her own little boutique or whatever. So what you talking about? Okay. But anyway, she was like, let me go pick them up. She got a little stretch limo okay andrea was feeling her puss on this episode you know and i was not mad at it bitch the shit started getting started when they got to the airport and the friends came okay it was stephanie the white girl bitch i would never forget which one of them friends that drew me into this show or at least this season when andrea no it was last season it had to be last season when we got introduced first to Lamar and uh, Andrea, whichever fucking season it is. And they said, what, did he give you a ring from the penny candy machine or a cracker box or some shit like that? That shit will forever be funny to me, okay? That shit was funny to me, all right? That was classic. That would go down in Love and Hip Hop, well, Love After Lock Up history. But anyway, it's Stephanie, it's Carrie, then the two white girls, and then I think it's Michelle, the black girl, okay? You know, and Michelle don't play no games, all right? So when they see uh, Andrea pull up in the limo, you know, she all on her diva shit or whatever. She was like, you know, got to have some class or whatever, finna show you Hollywood, finna do all this stuff and woo-woo-woo. Okay, fine. They was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, this is Stephanie. Oh, my God. It's a freaking limo. It's a freaking limo. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The whole time, Michelle is like this. Then here goes Carrie. Oh, my God. I've never been inside of a limo before. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't. Michelle the whole time is like this. 
I said that black girl was not having it. She know that, okay? But then they get into the limo. She taking them around. She take them to Randy Donuts and all that stuff. You know, um, <clears throat> Andrea said at one point seeing them act the way that they're acting is how she used to be in, um, you know, Utah or whatever. You know, so it's a difference. So she taking them around uh, LA or whatever. And then at the end of the night, babe, at the end of the night, they pull up to Andrea's place, okay? And Andrea was about to get up out of there. All right, girl, Andrea said, y'all can stay y'all asses in that limo. It's going to take y'all to the hotel or wherever y'all stand at, but you're not coming into here. So you mean you tell me we can't come into your house? No. At first, I thought she was playing. Bitch, she said, hell no. And she was like, no, you're not staying. Um, you can go. You can go. Oh, so you serious? Yes, I'm dead serious. Andrea told us that her friends are judgy as hell. You know, she was like, I think she either said Carrie or Stephanie judge wanna like Carrie judge Stephanie because she didn't have a double up oven. I said, what in the white? What in the white is going on? That shit was funny to me. I said, you know, they was talking their Mormon shit about her in that car on the way to the lim uh to the hotel. Mind you, in the um when they finished and they was doing the outside interviews or whatever, um, they was like, you know. I think uh, Andrea has changed a little bit while she's out here in L.A. You know, she's coming, you know, almost like a diva or something. And sometimes when you say diva, especially to a black person, you know, that's not necessarily a good word or whatever. And, and you know, you're basically trying to make it seem like she seems a little bit more than she what, what she should be. Um, she thinking too much of herself and she thinks she that shit or whatever. Well, compared to y'all asses, she probably is. You know, I never thought I'd take up for goddamn Andrea, but compared to y'all asses, she look like she living her life, okay? Even though she got concerns that she might be changing too, but still, you know what I'm saying? She living her life, okay? She ain't being boggled down all the time by these goddamn woman rules and shit like that, you know? I said, oh, I like this little Andrea. She told they asses to stay up in the car. <laughs> Hold on. She said, stay in the car. <laughs> they was like, you know, and I see the way that she's dressed in that dress that she had on. And it's obvious that she doesn't have on her undergarments. Okay. You know, not the long with like long johns or whatever. But they're like, you know, the undergarments are there to ward off evil spirits and stuff. I said the protection against evil. I'm sitting here like, that's what it is. Bitch, I didn't know that. Yeah, you learn something new every time, okay? You learn something new every time. That 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 part just tickled me pink, okay? It really did. Then we get into Shine and Destiny. Baby, listen. Shine is a dumbass. Now, I tried to take up for him just a little bit, but I did not know that it went as far as it went, okay? Let me show you how much dumb, dummy he is. So, Shine is on his way to the airport, Destiny is walking her ass down the street, okay, looking stupid, you know what I'm saying? At this point, she calling Sean, and his dumb ass gonna answer the phone. Baby, once you gave me the ring back, and I took that car back, there is no more communication at this point, you know what I'm saying? But, um, at this point, she calling him, talking about some, I need you to come down here and, um, you know, talk to me right quick or whatever, because I need your help or something. I said, what? What? I said, Sean, don't do it. Sean, don't do it. Sean did it. Sean went on ahead and did it like a weak bitch he is, okay? Kelly, I don't know. Was he like this all the time when you first met him? Because obviously it was something that attracted you to fuck that nigga at least six times, okay? Because I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Then he look a Oh, he looked like something wrong with him. He looked like he rode the short bus. No offense. No offense, okay? But I'm just saying, he looked like stuff just really ain't tight up there, okay? He go visit um and, and, and pull up in the parking lot where Destiny at. She basically coming to him asking for some fucking money. I ain't got no money. You know, you didn't took everything from me, so what am I supposed to do? I'm out here. I can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? I said, bitch, who, you got your goddamn nerves. You got your goddamn nerves. Destiny, you dead ass asked this man for some money after all the shit that went down. Ask that man for some money and this bitch gonna give it to her. $40. Well, all I got is $40. He said, well, you can throw the ring back and I took the car back. I thought that was it. Yeah, but you know, how I'm gonna get out? How I'm gonna do what I'm supposed to do or whatever? It was like, you know, basically going down that history. You told me I was a trick. You was playing me and all this stuff. It was like, you talked about something. I was scamming you. You scammed me too. You didn't tell me how old you really was. You didn't tell me about your kids. You didn't tell me this and you didn't tell me that. I said, girl, if you don't get the fuck up out of here, you were scamming that man for money. 
the whole damn time. Get out of here, okay? And then gonna say some, um, you know, it is what it is, but what he don't realize is that I still, uh, I think Sean don't know that I'm talking to somebody else. I said, so you going to ask him for some money and you can't get it from the boo that you talking to now? I said, what type of shit is this? Destiny still running the con because she knows Sean dumb as hell, okay? Can I get a hug at least? I mean, yeah, you can get a hug, I guess. I said, what? Sean is stupid. Just stupid, okay? And then he goes back to Vegas. I think it's Vegas where he's at or whatever. And he's talking about something. He needs to go over there to visit his kids and visit Kelly and make up with his family. Because basically, he cut their asses off just to be with Destiny. How we find this out? Baby, I didn't know it was this deep, okay? Girl, he comes up there to Kelly's house, right? He knock on the door. Kelly was like, what the hell are you doing here? And he was like, you know, I just want to come in and I want to talk. Okay, so what's going on? We can talk right here. What's going on? Uh, I said, first of all, Kelly, what you should have said is, bitch, what that thousand dollars that I gave you? Give it back. <laughs> Give it back, bitch. That's what you should have said. But um, no, he was like, you know, uh, me and Destiny, we done. You know, she gave me back the ring. As I said, that was going to happen. Y'all broke up just like I said it was going to happen. It wasn't going to last, as I said. As I said, that's all Kelly had to say. As I told you, as I said, I said, bitch, Kelly is she living for it because she was right and she knew how stupid he was okay she was like i'm not even gonna sweat this that much i'm gonna let this play out the way that it needs to play out and that's exactly what it did i'm gonna let him look stupid it was like well you ain't gotta fucking apologize to me because this this it's, it's gonna be a little bit more than you coming here saying this shit because the kids gotta know you know especially little grace aka kelly jr i said oh that's kelly coming right down the hall you know what i'm saying she was like you know you pissed off and she you done pissed her off all right baby Kelly Jr. was pissed, okay? She came out the side. She was like, what are you doing here? No, we ain't got shit to talk about. Uh-uh. Let me tell you something, because at the end of the day, bitch, you supposed to be my dad, and you supposed to always have my side. You cut us off for that, bitch. That's what it was. You know, she was trying to be respectful, but angry at the same time. But when I tell you Kelly Jr. read that man his rights, okay, she started crying. I wanted to be his ass just for letting that little girl cry. I said, that ain't no way to treat you. really, you really, really this basically this on and, and turn your back on your kids fuck kelly at this point it's your kids okay you really turned your back on your kids for a piece of prison puss okay that was playing you and you couldn't see through it the, the scenes that she was playing you and all this stuff i said oh that niggas ain't shit okay men really ain't shit sometimes you know what i'm saying bitch it just made me mad like kelly jr was sitting there crying and just telling his ass off and i said bitch keep going i said girl keep going tell him i'll have you feel purge your soul so he can know so he can fucking hurt so he can go home and he can cry in his pillow and say he was a deadbeat bitch i ain't shit that's what you need to do okay she was like no get the fuck up out of here i don't want to talk to you you did all this shit and you neglected us and we needed you and you didn't do this and i was like oh tell him off girl then she told the energy she was like listen there was times that i called that man and he wouldn't answer the phone um when i called and then there was times that i called and destiny would answer the phone and she would hang up and she wouldn't tell him that I called. There was times that I texted him and I see that this um, text message sent that he saw the text message and he read the shit because, you know, if you got Apple and you put your receipts on, oh, excuse me, that will show, you know what I'm saying? And he didn't even respond. I said, you dirty bitch over some nasty, could have been infected ass prison puss, drug addict prison puss. Okay. And he ain't necessary. And the funny thing and the messed up thing about it is he's not 100% done with destiny at this point because that $50,000 is still on the line. That little $5,000 retainer that he put down that would be $50,000 if she don't show up to the court is still on the line because they had to push the date back to her court, you know, because of COVID and all that stuff. I said, Sean, you should feel like the ultimate dirt bag. You should feel like shit like it ain't nothing because that is exactly what you is. You get no fucking sympathy. If Destiny was to come back and to play your ass some more, bitch, at this point, I want her to just ragtag your ass. I really do. I really want her to take you for everything. I don't even want her to show up at court. I want you to lose that money because that money could have went to your kid's college fund, okay? It could have went to their schooling. It could have went to anything else that was more important than a bitch that don't even fuck with you like that. Girl, Sean, you make me mad. Anyway, moving on from that, John and Christiana. First of all, y'all in these lights that be going off into the rooms and stuff like that, y'all be having these LED lights and stuff. Do y'all really be sleeping with them things on? Because I can't. 
I can't. You know what I'm saying? It, it'll drive me crazy. You know, sometimes I know some people turn them off, but I know some of y'all be sleeping with them bitches on like psychopaths, okay? I have to have it pitch black, you know? Um, and some of y'all sleep with y'all TVs on. I don't get how y'all do that shit either. It don't work for me. Unless I'm dead ass tired and I just fall asleep while I'm in the midst of watching TV. Some of y'all had a TV on just to go to sleep. I don't understand that, but it just wouldn't be me. They had the lights flickering up in there. I said, no. And Christiana wakes up, you know, she's in her head or whatever, thinking about this whole thing with John and Tara. You know, she was like, mama did say that, you know, she looking at the vents and shit. Mind you, I said, watch your bedroom in the basement. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. I don't trust basements. Okay. And um, she was like, you know, since I'm listening, I'm just thinking about what sounds my mama probably heard. You know, Tara's room right here. John's room right down the hall. Ain't no telling what they could have been doing. You know, I'm pretty sure mama probably heard their bedrooms and the bed squeaking and shit like that. Ain't no telling what they could have been doing. So this is, you know, it was resting on her heart so much. You know, she's nervous. She don't know what's going on because she don't want to find out that something happened. So she hit her sister up and she was like, we need to talk. And it was like, you want me to come over? No, you can't come over but um, because of the parole and all that stuff or whatever that's happening. But we can meet at the park. Ain't nobody going to know. John sleep at the moment, okay? So meet me at the park. She was like, okay, cool, sis. We can do all that. Um, You know, uh, that's what happened. And then, you know, Christiana is having doubts like, damn, I don't know if I should meet up with her to see exactly what happened because what if it comes out that they actually did sleep with each other? And if they did sleep with each other, it's like, um, that's going to be the end of my marriage. You know what I'm saying? And that's probably going to drive me to uh, do drugs again. I said, oh, Christiana, keep the faith. They didn't sleep with each other that we know of. They was flirting, but they didn't sleep with each other. But um, keep the faith, girl. And then Brittany and Marcelino... Um, um, I'm tired of them. Okay. I'm tired of them. It's cute or whatever, but I'm tired of the mama issues. All right. Get back to y'all drama. Okay. Quit letting this lady, you know, run your life or whatever. She going to fix her problems. She going to fix her problems. If not, you can't do nothing about it. Uh, you know, her and the stepdaddy had a talk and she crying to him and all that stuff or whatever. And he was like, I don't even know if it was a good idea that the bitch came out there. <laughs> Everybody is over that lady, okay? Everybody is over that lady. Moving on past that, um, Puppy and Amber. Listen, Puppy is out of control at this point, according to Amber. Like, you know, she want to go to Vegas. Amber showed up to work late. She talking to her coworkers. First of all, uh, Amber, you doing you, rule number one. Don't get too close to your coworkers, okay? And don't tell them all your business or whatever. And you already done fucked that up, okay? Because you done told that lady about Vegas. You done told that lady about Vincent. The fact that she knew what you was talking about, you know, that didn't sit well with me. I don't, I don't get close to my coworkers like that. You ain't finna know all my personal shit like that, okay? No. All right? The only way you'll find some stuff out about me that I never told you is if you watch my videos and I done said it in the video. Other than that, I'm not finna sit there and I'm finna tell you, girl, listen... This was what was going on in my childhood. This what happened in, in my household. This was what was going on. And then this nigga tried to play me. Do you understand this shit? No, we're not finna sit down and have conversations like that. That's not what's finna go on, okay? Never, ever. You know, but at this point, you know, she like puppy acting up. She not showing up to work or she showing up to work drunk and shit like that. You know, at this point, she's kind of over puppy in her mess. But, you know, she don't know how puppy's gonna react when she finds out about Sammy. And speaking of Sammy, who pulls up, right? Right at the, <laughs> right on time. I said, why does he know where you work at? First of all, the producers told him if she didn't. Okay, they was like, show up at this exact time because she just got there. All right. <laughs> so he show up, right? <laughs> I said, I didn't expect Sammy to look like that. I said, he decent for her. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, what's up? She was like, now, I knew he got out a couple of days ago. But damn, he was like, I just got out the other day. And it was like, you know, I had to come up here and see you. You know, you look good as ever. He was like, damn, uh, Amber look good as fuck. Basically, you know, she's looking, you know, extremely beautiful since the last time I seen them. They haven't seen each other in 10 years. Okay, they both have been to prison within them 10 years. You know what I'm saying? She said the relationship was on and off a little volatile. You know, they used to sell drugs and he didn't like that she was doing her own thing and you know, um, they used to use and all that mess. Blah, blah, blah. Boo, boo, boo. But what got me was Sammy said she looked real good. 
she is a beauty bitch, okay? Let me tell you something. Some of the best sex I ever had in my life. I said, damn, Amber, you got the men's and the women's all up on your puss. I said, oh, shit, let me find. I don't want to find out, but let me find out, girl. I said, you must got a golden thing down there, a golden cooch. I said, all right, Amber, you pulling them all to the yards, okay? Man had that man out there crying, like, uh, I just want to know, you know, like, what everything's going to go because at the end of the day, you know, our time got cut short, and it's like, even though I did what I did, I still miss you, and I still love you, and I still want to know where this going to go. I said, is this grown man crying like this? Oh, oh. I said, let them tears flow, baby. Let them tears flow, bitch. A weak bitch. A bitch, I would have got weak right now in the moment, and I would have been like, let's open your car door. Take these drawers off. Come on, just do what you got to do. Shit, hold up. Do Listen, come on. Come on, we can give it a try. We can give it a try. I'll give you another taste. You know what I'm saying? That would have been me. I said, as soon as I would have saw them tears, them tears would have got me. And then you talk about how much you love me and all that. Girl. <laughs> it's so glad that I am not a hetero, okay? This bitch, that would have got me, okay? That would have got me. Girl. Amber sitting there looking like, ain't this some shit? I don't know what to do because she got puppy to think about. I said, fuck that bitch. Get your man. You don't want that girl like that. Tell her how it is. Oh, they going to have a blow up. Okay? Next thing we get, um, Michael and goddamn Sarah. Michael down there in Flint. Okay? He visiting his mama, playing on the piano, playing some remedial ass tune or whatever that he remembered. And basically telling his mama that, you know, him and Sarah's in an um, open relationship. And they going to do what they going to do. He can um, be with who she he want to be with. She can be with who she want to be with. But at the end of the day, they going to try to figure out what they want to. And if Sarah was to be like, you know, I want to be in a relationship with you, I'm going to be with her. I drop all my hoes and all that stuff for her. Bad you, the mama had asked, do you have any other women that you come down here to see? He said, no, nah, ma. Next thing you know, he's going to meet up with some other bitch named Sasha. He was like, what's up, sexy? You know how he always, the same thing. He was like, I like to have different conversation with different beautiful women and shit like that. And I'm looking at Sasha and I was just like, no offense. No offense because I ain't looking the best right about now. But it's understandable, bitch. When y'all see me on screen tomorrow when I do Love in Huntsville, bitch, the hair gonna be done, okay? Hopefully the hair will be done. I got an appointment tomorrow, okay? Uh, The energy probably gonna be a little bit better. But baby, um... Sasha looked like she got razor blades under her tongue, probably inside her cheek. Sasha looked like she didn't cut a few bitches with a blacky mouth and a blunt in her mouth at the same time, okay? Sasha looked like she can beat Michael's ass, okay? Sasha looked like she will peg the fuck out of Michael, all right? And if you don't know what pegging is, look that shit up, okay? Baby, I, 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 was, I was like, Michael, you really have no type. And I ain't saying that you got to be super fine, but none of the women that um, he has been with has been like, oh, fine as shit or whatever. The only one that I actually probably think and out of the group that we seen between Maria, Sarah, Sasha, and um, Megan that we seen. And then that other little girl that we saw uh, that he uh, missed the court date over. I would say I would pick Megan first and then her. Those probably were the cutest ones. Okay, I'm sitting here like, what is going on? I didn't like like uh, Harold told me on Twitter, vagina is his type. Okay, it don't matter what it looked like, vagina is his type. And you know he up there talking about the relationship and you know yeah we got this open marriage and stuff like this. And she was like basically y'all back you back on the market, baby. When they start kissing, it it, it just it looked like her breast probably <laughs> her breath probably smell like. Coke 44 mixed with Hennessy, mixed with Black and Mouse and cigarettes. Like, she looked like she still smoked Slim Jims, okay? Uh, Virginia Slims and, you know, uh, put a Black and Mouse mixed in with the blunt. You know what I'm saying? And probably sprinkle a little something else on top of it. It just looked like it's that. It looked like a sticking uh, situation. And I just, like, I don't want to be in that room when y'all actually do what y'all do. I don't even want to see it. And I... I I'd be willing to see a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But that's just one I can pass on, you know? And I was just like, wow, Michael. Meanwhile, Sarah go meet up with Malcolm. 
Malcolm was like, she was like, you know, because you got up and you left abruptly or whatever. He was like, yeah, I ain't really like how I left either because I was really hungry. You know what I'm saying? I really wanted to eat that food. But, you know, shit happens. And it was like, you know, I felt some type of way because Michael was staying there. And um, she was like, but you got to understand the reason why he was there for the kids and all that stuff. I mean, I understand the situation, but, you know, a part of me still feel like you in love with him. And, and he was like, you still feel like I love him? Yes, that's what I feel like. And then he asked her, so y'all still having sex? Is y'all having sex? She was so taken aback by that. I said, bitch, I don't care if you think that that's an offensive um comment or, or a question to ask. Baby, I would have asked the same thing because that would have been the next question. Because if he's staying there and you still, I feel like you still in love with him or whatever. You still got love in him for some type of way, some type of reason. I feel like y'all fucking. And so I'm going to ask the question. Okay. Don't be sitting there like, <gasps> you know, Michael didn't already put all y'all tea out and said that y'all still having sex. So come on now. We already know. Okay. Okay, just be real with it. But anyway, that was them. I said messy. Now, see, it's going to get good and messy at the end of the episode. I mean, at the end of the season. Next week is the season finale, okay? The so-called season finale before we get back to the regular season. Bitch, Chevelle, and goddamn Quaylin. <clears throat> Hold on a second. I had to wet my palate. What the fuck? Ouch. See, that's what I get for talking about people. Oh, oh no. What the fuck? I can't laugh too hard. Oh. First of all, what the fuck did she have on? Okay, what in the biker city did she have on? Okay, no, no. Let me just tell you something. Them, like, like, like my girl uh, Mimi on, um, Many on um goddamn Twitter said, Chevelle does not, I said, she don't dress for her body type. You know, she has horrible fashion sense. She still dressed like she in 2009. She dressed like she get her clothes still from Rainbow, which ain't nothing wrong with it, but she get it from the $7 store. And if you old enough, you remember the $7 store, okay, bitch? Um, she dressed like she get her shit from the outlet mall, okay? You know, you find, you can find some cute shit, but her shit don't be all that, okay? It just be dated as fuck, okay? That shit been up in her closet for the past 15 years, and she just can't let go of it. That's the type of bitch that Ch Chevelle look like. When she had that, that shit on, that jumpsuit or whatever, that bodysuit that she had on to go look at dresses, to look at wedding dresses, I said, bitch, who the fuck told you to put that on? First of all, no. Second of all, your body type, and I'm not trying to body shame, but we have to learn to dress according to our body types, you know, something that's going to accentuate our curves in the right way, you know, that's going to slim us up probably in the right way. That's like me putting on that bodysuit. Okay, bitch, I ain't got no ass for it. I barely got hips for it, okay? Bitch, I got a stomach that is sitting that stands out more than my ass do, okay? Bitch, that just wouldn't look right. Y'all will clown my ass if you see me in some shit like that. I ain't necessarily trying to clown her, but I'm just want to know why. Why, okay? That's one grievance that I have with her. Second of all, that hair. Who put them crochets up in there? Now, see, my mama used to do my sister hair like that. But see, my mama, and she learned this shit off of YouTube. And when my mama did my sister hair, baby, it looked like a professional did the hair. Um, who did Chevelle hair? Chevelle, you did that shit yourself because I don't believe no real professional would did that shit. Now, bitch, I'm finna, that's like me trying to do my own shit and I know that it ain't gonna come out right, okay? That's why I pay good money. Well, it ain't really that much, but I pay enough money to get my shit good, okay? That's what I do. You should have took the time and went to the shop. And if you did have a stylist and I'm talking about somebody that's not your cousin that didn't do it in their kitchen, in their bedroom, to go do your hair, you shouldn't have did that style, okay? Because I shouldn't see your braids popping up on this side and it's coming over like this and over like that all around here and everything else, okay? I shouldn't see that, that peeking through and then you got the top layer and why is the part up here so goddamn big? I was so confused. I said, girl, you really said, I'm killing it, bitch. I'm killing it, okay? And your friend ain't shit, okay? Your friend ain't real because she should have told you about yourself because, bitch, if I would have seen you like that, I would have went back in the house. I would have got back in the car and said, no, I'm not going nowhere with you looking like that. You not and embarrass me, okay? I can't be looking good and you finna be looking like that and we gonna look at wedding dresses for you? No, bitch, that's not what we doing, okay? But I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We got off, we got off. Whew. Anyway, 
Um, I just had to get that out. I just had to, and then the makeup be fucked up too. Girl, Chevelle, we just need to do an overhaul. We just need to do an overhaul, okay? You know, come down to Chicago, you ain't that far, whatever, and, you know, I treat you for a day. I treat you for a day, okay, bitch? You know what I'm saying? Because, girl, I want to get you right. We can get each other right. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, you tell me what I need to do, okay? And I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Since I'm, 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 I'm pointing out some shit about you, point out some shit about me, okay? Y'all, I lost four pounds since I came out the hospital. Bitch ain't really been eating shit, okay? So that's where that went. <laughs> I'm just not starting to actually drink something other than water. You know what I'm saying? So listen, girl. Ashley finna work on this figure again. Uh, I can't wait to get on the exercise bike. I haven't been able to exercise because I've been in irritating pain because of this whole thing um, prior to the surgery. That shit stopped me from doing everything. But anyway, we off that. We off that. Chevelle, she finna go um, to the uh, bridal shop or whatever with her friend. You know, she got Quay Lynn out here uh, watching Myela or whatever. And um, she got some little grievances and some concerns about the fact that they've been engaged for the past couple of weeks or so. And ever since they got back together, ain't been no sex. And Quaylin still ain't found a job. I said, y'all ain't fucked yet. Y'all, you mean to tell me? Well, that's partly your fault because he wanted to do it when he first saw you. But you said no. <laughs> I would have said no, too. But then again, I probably wouldn't have. Because, listen, I went long enough without it. I'm not going to torture myself anymore just because I want to prove a point. Okay? I would have been like, bitch, get in. Anyway. Anyway. Let me tell you something. I saw a whole lot of myself in Quaylin tonight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it disturbed me and it opened my eyes to a lot of stuff because some of the shit that he said is some of the shit that I've said and I've done. Okay? But we're not going to get on that. Anyway. <laughs> She going to the bridal shop, whatever. She feels some type of way that she got to have her friend there instead of her mom because of them, you know, the family going back and forth and not approving of them being together and all that stuff. And so the mom do come over later. We going to skip all that. Let's get to when the mom comes over and she was finna get Myela and um, Quaylin was in the house and she got a text message on her phone. Okay. And he looking like, hmm, mind you, we should have known what was going to happen when uh, intro to the episode, they was doing a preview and they showed us with her boot up with old boy Jalen or whoever he was. Okay. And talking about some, she hasn't told Quaylin about Jalen yet. Okay, fine. So the text message comes through. Quaylin looking like, huh? Okay, so you get no men telling me I can't do this and I can't do that, but yeah, you know, Chevelle get a free pass. She doing all this stuff and she doing all that. Okay, fine. So Chevelle come back and he like, mm. she like, what's wrong with you? Why you looking like that? And she was like, you got a text message. You got a text message from some nigga named Jay talking about some, hey, beautiful. Now, I will feel some type of way too, okay? Now, Chevelle whole thing is... Okay, and okay, and I was talking to him. We were not together. We were not together. But you're together now, and you're still getting text messages from another man that's saying, hey, beautiful, in a tone as if y'all still together or y'all still talking. Regardless of if y'all went that route of having sex or not, or was taking it further than talking, you still getting text messages from him. And it's been a couple of weeks since y'all been back together. So that means that y'all most likely been texting on and off it within that couple of weeks. And she threw out there, bitch, the reason why I'm doing this because he, he gives me attention. You don't give me attention. You don't do this and you don't do that. And he was like, what? You don't do what you're supposed to do for me. That's what it is, okay? You don't do, you don't support your man. You don't be there for your man. You don't do this or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, damn, bitch, have you been in my mind? Have you been in some of the situations I've been in because I have said the same thing? Bitch, you ain't been there for me. You ain't never done no shit for me. You supposed to be out here working, uh, uh, helping me out and being on my side and all this shit. You ain't never done no shit like that for me i didn't say those same damn words bitch to make a bitch feel bad just to make her feel bad i told y'all i'm a little toxic okay i can admit that shit and that's probably why i still like quaylin even though i know that he's a fuck boy and he's an asshole too i said quaylin we're not gonna pick a fight over this shit right are we and i said if i know myself yes we are because I would have. And that's exactly what happened. I said, oh, no. That's not what's going to go on. So they get into it for a little bit, and then the, t the episode go off. I said, no. I'm thinking we're going to get an extra 15 minutes or some shit. No. I said, no. I need to see more. So they're going to really get into it next week. They're going to really get into it next week. And Mike is supposed to be proposing to Sarah. Girl, get the fuck out of here. Anyway, that's love at the lockup, life at the lockup. I got to chill. 
I did too much. Girl, I'm over here laughing. My sad is over here screaming this shit. Bitch, anyway, the shit I do for y'all, uh, and for myself, because I had to get on here and talk to y'all. But uh, y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode, and I will see y'all later. Peace.